Hello there, my fellow magic students, and welcome to another episode of Warhammer Fantasy Lore. Today we will resume our forays into the Colleges of Magic from the Empire. The particular order of magic we're gonna describe today might seem like one of the most obvious, but the opposite is true. They are among the most mysterious, and dare I say, the least understood of all the colleges. Ladies and gentlemen, the Amethyst College. I am your host, the Magister GDN for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Magisters of the Amethyst Order, also known as Amethyst Wizards or Spiriters, embrace the purple wind of magic called Shaiish, practicing so-called secessionary thaumaturgy. There is one very important thing to note before going further though. Despite the fact that these guys study Shaiish, the wind of death, they are not necromancers. One way or another, the Amethyst Order is among the most introverted of the Imperial Orders of Magic. In fact, only the Shadowmancers, the members of the Grey Order, are thought to be more mysterious and sneaky than them. No other college can match the austerity, the asceticism, and the discipline of the Magisters of Shaiish. As Teclis impressed upon the first Magisters of this order centuries ago, their magic rests upon the line most easily crossed by humans, a line that once crossed only leads to darkness, suffering, and misery. The Brethren of Shaiish, which is how they call themselves, hold the power of life and death in their hand. With one gesture, they can squeeze a man's heart inside his chest so that he dies of apparently natural causes, or they can delay a death almost indefinitely. The more they learn about the nature of death, the greater the control over Shaiish they have, and the greater their temptation will be to delay or even escape their own end. As with any strands of magic in general, embracing Shaiish over a period of time can extend the Magister's life considerably, but still there will always be the temptation to turn to the black art of necromancy. And so it is that the Amethyst Order is utterly ruthless and remorseless when it comes to initiates drawing upon the dark or black magic. Whether they are corrupted or not by their action, they will be expelled from the Order as soon as they are discovered and then they will be obliterated in more ways than one. Every time a member of this order turned traitor, the Magisters of Shaiish hunted them down without remorse. They covered all the traces of the traitor's crimes, destroying his works and eradicating all memory of him. Robbed graves were filled before anyone could notice. Mysterious deaths were blamed upon the local brigands, and the sudden death of houseplants or pets blamed upon unknown parasites or the early frost. Whether the chase took them years or days, no one has escaped the combined wrath of the Lord Magisters of the Lore of Death. But, although these measures might seem harsh, they are only fitting to the crimes they are designed to combat. The renegades of the Order of Shaiish can become mighty in the arts of necromancy should they wish it. While the magisters of many colleges have some eccentricities, the madness or corruption of an amethyst wizard is a truly terrifying thing to behold. The main symbol of the amethyst college is the scythe. Because of their business with the winds of Shaiish, and the grim aspect of death hangs heavy above them. To be a student of death magic is a weighty burden, because an amethyst wizard will never be trusted entirely by those around him. The suspicious dread is only fueled by the silent and somber nature of the wizards themselves, who would rather communicate with each other via telepathy rather than speech. And those little-used voices, when they do use them, have the dusty tones more suited to the dead. Even other wizards, whose own oddities and habits are nothing short of peculiar to an outsider, find something distasteful about the obsessions of the amethyst wizards. For this reason, the scythe is always portrayed as a scythe inverted, to represent a heavy burden propped against the ground. Sometimes an amethyst wizard will carve upon a tomb a pair of overlaid and reversed Shaiish runes. Only a fool should enter such a place, for the symbol warns of great evil slumbering inside. 
The robes of the Amethyst Wizards are of the deepest purple, although many wear jet black robes as well. The Magisters of this order often carry a razor-sharp scythe instead of a staff, although this scythe is not of the unwieldy variety used for harvesting, but an elegant object designed for battle and a symbol of the Magister's order. The belts of these Magisters are often hung about with bleached human bones, symbolizing the transience of life. The bones are sometimes carved with occult runes and various emblems of the order, like the hourglass and the thorny rose, symbols by which the people recognize them. Regardless of how they looked when they joined the order, the austerity of life in the Amethyst Order and all the hours of study assure that all initiates become lean and pale before long. All the members of the Order are clean-shaven from their scalps to their toes. They are indeed as hairless as a bleached skeleton. The Amethyst Order is expected to provide Imperial armies with battle magisters when the need arises. The local authorities and the wealthy families living in Sylvania are often known to employ the Magisters of Shaish. Such is the malignancy of this land that many people believe that the dead always rest uneasily in their graves, and vampires stalk the night. Whether true or not, the skills of the Amethyst Order are always valued by the desperate, the paranoid, and the terrified. And the Magisters view it as a sacred duty to undo all works of necromancy and dark magic wherever they can find them. The College of the Amethyst Order looks, as you might imagine, like the home of the Adams family. A grim sepulchral building, more akin to a necropolis than a center of learning. The building is built out of dark stone in an elaborate Gothic style. The windows and doors are in pointed arches, gargoyles and statues adorning the architecture, and narrow balcony towers rising from the building. The door to the college is decorated with symbols of death, and it is always open. And next to the door is a bell. The building does appear completely abandoned though. It seems that no one ever sees a wizard entering or leaving the place. Lights are never seen on the building windows, except for pale ghostly lights at night. The citizens of Aldorf usually try to avoid the college. Its proximity to the cemetery does not help either and rumors abound of unholy practices regarding the Amethyst Order and the cemetery. However, if a citizen is brave enough to enter, they would not find any signs of activity carried out by the wizards. In fact, they would not find any wizards at all. The floors, the furniture, the draperies, and the shrines to more that dot the holes are all covered in dust and cobwebs. No sign of life could be seen and above all, an eerie silence pervades everything. The only comings and goings from the college appear to be enormous swarms of bats leaving the college's towers every sunset, and the rats, which are known by the sewer watch, to enter and exit the cellars. In actuality, there are two different versions of the college. One that is seen by most people is completely abandoned. The other is visible only to those with the arcane knowledge of the Amethyst lore, and this is where the college's activities take place. This one looks much like the mundane version, but it is less dusty and the wizards are present in it. The college also includes offices for the wizards. These are usually locked and contain nameplates above the door. Beyond these are the wizards' personal rooms. Strangely enough, the Amethyst Wizards also like to keep pets and furnish their rooms with living plants. Deeper inside the college are the libraries, the laboratories, and the dining hall. If someone has a delivery for a wizard, they must ring the bell outside the door. This will summon the college's steward. This guy, who appears in the mundane version of the college, will then bear the parcel or the letter to the wizard in question. If someone has business in the college, the steward will fetch the wizard they have business with. The individual will not be able to enter the college unless a specific wizard takes them. The main temple of Moor in Aldorf is also just a couple of blocks away from the Amethyst College. The people living in the area usually have a profession related to death and burial, and are considered a bit eccentric. 
The magisters of the Amethyst Order accept rather few apprentices, and the ones wanting to learn Amethyst magic must pass through rigorous testing and also take some serious vows. This college expects the apprentices to hand over all their worldly possessions and wealth upon joining the order, including all the rights to any future inheritance. In some circumstances, a new member is allowed to keep certain possessions, but this is very rare. There are an inordinate number of ex-members from the priesthood of Moor who join the Amethyst Order. It is not uncommon among those that feel drawn to serve Moor that they may in fact have a particular sensitivity to the purple wind of magic. Those manifesting signs of power not bestowed upon them by their god directly through prayer or ritual are deemed either to be cursed or unsuitable candidates to be a priest of Moor. And these rejected and disenchanted individuals often find themselves drawn to the sepulchre building of the Amethyst Order. If they heed the call, they are set upon an inevitable path that can rarely, if ever, be deviated from. The teaching methods of the college are apprentice-based, but other than that, little is known of the internal workings of the system of education in the Amethyst Order. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Amethyst Order, Students of the Purple Wind of Shaish, for today. It is definitely a college a bit more mysterious than the others, but they are powerful nevertheless. Word to the wise, never refer to one as a necromancer if you value your life. What are your thoughts on these dark and grim magicians? Is the order among your favorite? What do you like or dislike most about them? As always, feel free to share any thoughts or questions if you have any in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and I wish you all a great and healthy day. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.